Welcome back. We're here in my practice space and I'm about to play on the five reads that we just finished making. Before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the process from when I finish to now. I use these plastic bags to keep the reed holders in with these Boveda two-way humidity control packs. I use the 72% humidity. The uh, reed packs that I use are the Daddario reed case. You can use them with uh, clarinet, saxophone. Um, they're good because where the reed sits, they have ridges underneath, so it dries 360. If uh, you just put these humidity packs inside, I don't, I don't put it inside the case. I put it outside, but within the plastic bag. I have found that sometimes it gets mold. I've, I've actually had mold up here inside the case. So my solution to that is that after I'm finished playing a reed, I put it in with the case open and I let it sit out for maybe uh, 30 minutes and then I'll close it up, put it back in the resealable bag with the two-way humidity control. The reason we do the two-way humidity control is so that the reed doesn't dry out too quickly and warp. Um, in this process, as we start breaking in the reeds, the first time that I play them, I, I only play each reed for maybe at most 30 seconds, and I'm not playing on it hard. I'm just getting a, a feel for uh, how it plays, how it responds, and what, if any, work needs to be done to it. When I began learning how to adjust reeds, I was learning from uh, David Alvarado. He's the one who taught me how to adjust reeds. And it, was, it had gotten to the point where he was teaching me and he finally said, the best way to learn how to adjust a reed is to make a reed. So David Alvarado is the one who taught me how to make a reed. And when I first learned how to make reeds, clarinet reeds, I learned to make them from scratch. Uh, no machines, we just used knives and sandpaper. And I did learn a lot about reeds, clarinet reeds and reed adjustment. The process that I just took us through is one that I sort of, it moves faster. Ma making them by hand, you make one reed and it might take a day and a half. And my process, you can see that I can batch out many reeds. It becomes more like a commercial reed but the advantage is that you seal the bottom. So the bottom of the reed is sealed before you ever profile it. And that's something you can't do with a commercial reed. And in that way, it, it does make it worth it, even though it's not a, a fully handmade reed. Uh, it's sort of commercialized, as you saw in the process. But it still gives me the control over every aspect of making the reeds. So. Before I get started playing, this being day one, I'm just going to play on each reed for 30 seconds. I don't want to waste a lot of time with showing you me putting the reed on each time, so I'm going to cut in and out. This is not to not show you something, it's just so that I don't waste uh, time. You don't need to see me putting on each one of the reeds. And the other thing that I need to do is switch from the lapel mic to a mic that will pick up um, the clarinet sound in the room better than what this lapel mic will pick up. You still won't be able to hear exactly what I hear. Um, the microphone just doesn't do, this doesn't do it justice. And then whatever happens between me recording it and you hearing it on uh, whatever platform you're listening to it on, uh, there's degradation in the sound and there's really no way for you to hear exactly what I'm hearing here. So I'll try to describe it to you the best I can. Uh, but we'll take a a brief pause and I'll switch out the microphones and get ready to play those five reads. This is read number one. So that read is playing very stiff. It's going to take a little bit of work to break that one in. I won't do anything to it right now. Um, so we'll go ahead and switch to the next read. This is read number two.
That's a good read. Um, it sounds a little bit fuzzy to me, um, and it's a little bit hard, but that's what I want um, as I continue through the break-in process. Uh, this, this read's going to break in nicely. This is read number three. So I can tell immediately that this read is um, very soft, so I'm going to clip it one more time and see if that solves the problem. Okay, this is read number three again. I clipped it. Let's see if it fixed the problem. That might work out. It's a little bit stiff now and uh, could break in nicely. This is read number four. This one is also um, soft. This is read number four after clipping it. Okay, so it's a little bit um, closer to where I want it. it this one might not work out. There's a little balancing issue. There's a little more on the, the left side here that I'm gonna to have to take off. And when I do that, it might, might turn out to be too soft, but we'll see. This is read number five. And this one also needs to be clipped. This is read number five after being clipped. sure if it needs to be balanced but it's sounding it's sounding okay it, it remains to be seen whether it'll break in too far and become too soft or if it'll settle in be, and become a good read now that I've played all five reads I wanted to say a few words about putting the read on and then what I do after I play each read when I put the read on it takes me a while because I'm trying to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly that the tip of the reed is at the tip of the mouthpiece and that everything is straight and square. If you take a reed and you move it left or right, it changes the way that it plays. If you move it up or down, it changes the way that it plays. So what I'm trying to do is get it on there just perfectly so that I know exactly what the properties and characteristics of the reed are. If any work needs to be done, then I know exactly uh, what needs to be done. At the end of each playing, I'll take the reed off I have to make sure that it's nice and wet. And then I put it on a piece of glass, hold it down, and I take my finger and I massage the first third of the vamp. And it's, it's like I'm massaging in this direction uh, to get the moisture to go into the pores. I go up and back and then I go two thirds and I'm still pushing in or up on the vamp. Go up and back and then the third and final time I'm massaging almost like I'm squeegeeing out the moisture from the reed. This helps to break the reed in. It also closes the pores so that the reed doesn't become waterlogged while you're playing it. After I'm done doing that, I'll take my pin and I put a mark on the butt end of the reed to show that I've played this reed one time. 